Now, Tim, before I get you out of here, I do want to talk about just the overall landscape of college football and the way it's changing in 2021 and beyond. And certainly what's taken over the SEC conversation is the whole Texas-Oklahoma thing, them joining the yeah. SEC. It's sounding like they may be in the SEC as soon as next season. Um, I know yeah. this is something, again, you've talked to our good friend Jay boy about and others because it's, it's something that – Everybody across college football wants to discuss, but your overall thoughts on SEC expansion, you know, I, I, I have some, some listeners of my show that they voice concerns that it's making college football less likable with the expansion of the SEC and the alliance. And I, I don't know if we'll ever get to a point where people don't look forward to college football anymore. Like, it's really hard to fathom that. And yeah. the NIL stuff coming up, which I'm a fan of, obviously, but yeah. I, I, I do understand people's worry of the sport as a whole. What, what's your take on just the expansion we're seeing across college? Well, well, we're still in August, right? Mm. So it's still the talking season, silly season. And it's during that time when guys that do what you do mm. uh, or guys that are on the air daily doing radio uh, are dealing with a lot of stressed out fans that just <laughs> want to be pissed off, you know? <laughs> They're, they're really pissed off about a lot of things and it makes it harder for them when they see what, what that they've always conjured up in their heads in their, their fantasy world of Saturday athletics, you know, Saturday college football for most fans of the sport, the average guy, regardless of what kind of job he has, uh, he, he has on the weekend, this fantasy about, it's college football. And this is the way it was when I was in school. And this is the way it's always been. And this is the rivalry. And we're, you know, it's the third Saturday of October and it's the border war, uh, the old cocktail party and the, this and the, that. And when they see some of these things changing, uh, it, it really bothers them. And uh, most of them actually are in my age bracket. Most of them are 60 years of age or older. You know, I'm 65 now. Uh, and, but I've always felt like college football was the slowest to change other than maybe major league baseball and that we needed to become more progressive and that we needed to, uh, understand what's important for not just the short term, but the long term of the sport, you know, the BCS world in crisis countdown, get rid of that crap. College football playoff is a joke. It's less accessible than, than the BCS was. We need you know, not only do we need an expanded playoff, but we need to unify college football's leadership and have a czar, someone that will take care of everything for every league, not to the extent that maybe Roger Goodell would for the NFL, but to have some semblance of stability and unity in what we're doing. And all of the things that are happening right now, Chris, are moving us in that direction. I mean, all the things that were bothering me and I it, you know it's funny I, I would talk about you know the fly and the ointment you know Boise State with the BCS and all that back in the day at CBS and boy did that piss off a lot of old SEC fans really oh my god ah, Boise State doesn't play anybody I said well I'm just here I'm just telling you here they are playing ball over there and those guys are pretty good and you know they deserve a chance they put on their jock just like the guys at Tennessee Alabama and LSU and Georgia, I'm just telling you. And, and uh, you know, they would cry that I was a socialist when it came to college football, uh, which obviously is the total opposite of my politics. Anyone that knows anything about my political lean uh, we should know better than that. Mm. But we need all these growing pains to take place. You know, what Greg Sankey did in reaching out, now, and, and by the way, I do believe Texas and Oklahoma wanted to come to the SEC. Right. I don't know that their presidents called Greg Sankey rather than Greg Sankey called them. And it, it doesn't matter. It's not my business. But we do live in a world of images and impressions. Mm. And the way this thing plays out everywhere else outside the South is that they flat out poached the Big 12. Mm. All right. Good, bad, or indifferent. The SEC has now become the Darth Vader of college football. They are the black-headed villain that reached out and brought in two big names that would tilt, tilt the landscape in their direction uh, for the long term. 
And, and what you saw earlier this week with the commissioners of the ACC, Big Ten, and Pac-12 and their alliance announcement, it, it, it lacked specificity. Mm. It lacked uh, substantive news about when it starts, how they're going to do it. They admit readily they didn't sign a contract. Okay, so you can make a case, and I know some have. Well, this was sort of a, you know, all show, no, no dough deal. What, what are you guys really doing? Well, I, th- I think they did a lot, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, they, they basically sent the salvo across the bow to SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey. All three of us are going to vote together on everything. So get ready. SEC, you better get ready for every major decision that's going to be made in college football. Jim Phillips. Klyavkov of the Pac-12 and Frank Warren, uh, Kevin Warren, excuse me, the Big Ten Commissioner, they're going to vote together. So their three votes trumps your one vote. Mm -hmm. So you better understand that. The other thing they did was they said, you know what, we can grow monetarily without having to expand. And how we do that is by having greater content. How do you create greater content? by scheduling major games intersectionally between their conferences Mm. and their television rights are going to be coming up soon. The big tens is first. And then the PAC 12s, the ACC is stuck with a bad deal for 12 years that they inherited. So how they work it out, I don't know. We'll we'll see, Mm. but there's no question in my mind that a lot was achieved with that uh, announcement earlier this week and bottom line, is that moving forward, we're going to see this little tug of war take place as realignment continues. And now it's up to Bob Bowlesby of the Big 12 to find out how he's going to hold his eight remaining teams. And I think he got some good news uh, the other day when the decision was made by the Big 10 to say, we're really not, we don't need to expand. Mm. We can get more money with the same teams we have. You know, we got all these households. We got Penn State. We got Ohio State. We got Michigan. We don't need to add anybody. And I'm pretty sure that the Pac-12 is not going to add anyone either. And the Pac-12 gets saved by its association with the Big Ten and these games that they're going to have. And they really need they really needed something. They were in peril financially. So this is going to help them. So I think the Big 12 needs to look to Boise State, to BYU, maybe even look over to uh, the American Conference again and see if they want to conjure up conversation pieces again with the likes of Memphis or Cincinnati and see what transpires there. But they're on the clock. Mm. But I do think they'll still be involved. I don't think you have to worry that these four super conferences are going to leave everybody else out. I really don't. Um, we can't have college football without the, the rust belt and the Sun Belt portions of the country involved. And uh, it's not in the best interest of the game. And I think all these guys know that you may be uh, anti certain leagues or anti commissioners of certain leagues, but I will tell you that every one of them, you know, and I know them all very well with the exception of Klyavkov. I don't know him because he's been outside college football's realm. I know the other guys very well. They're all very bright, well-intentioned and caring people about the sport. So I think they'll work it out. There's a healthy rivalry there. And I think that's also good for the sport, you know, and I don't, I I don't know of anyone that should be more comfortable than the sec with being the bad guy. Mm. I think Greg Sankey absolutely is dug in and loves being the the, the so-called emperor of the new regime of college football. Mm. I think he like, and I like seeing that, but that's, that's leadership. Mm. Um, I got, I got a lot of negativity from people in other conferences when I defended uh, Sankey for getting Texas and Oklahoma. I, I thought it was a step in the right direction of leadership. He, he was just looking ahead. You got this NIL thing. What do we need? We need more money. Chris, they need more money. He ensured that his membership is going to get a lot more money. 